good getting internet. Today is the 2nd of April. I was going to do a walking vlog today, but well, this is what outside looks like. So at the moment it's snowing. Uh, it was actually snowing heavier earlier, and the snow, you can maybe be able to tell, I don't think so, snow doesn't show up very well on camera, but it's converting to snain and rain. Not exactly whether that's good for walking. So we're going to have to do something else today. I think it might be time to introduce you to some keeps. All right, this is actually my work desk. I'm currently in my office. I've just arranged things and including arranging the cat that's about to walk by. Hi, Isin. Isin Kitty, I'm recording here, okay? I know. I would like you to go back to napping, though. He hasn't been very, feeling well today, unfortunately. And yes, I am recording this at the same time as my voiceover. Hi. Um, so, keyboards. So, I have gotten more heavily into the mechanical keyboard hobby, is the way I phrase it, because... Or, there's... So, there's both a mechanical keyboard hobby and a mechanical keyboard fandom. I am more in the hobby, not the fandom. And I'll explain in a bit. But first off, I need to explain mechanical keyboards. So I will show you my first mechanical keyboard. Now, technically, I do have an IBM Model M buckling spring keyboard, but that doesn't really qualify as a mechanical keyboard. This, on the other hand, is my first mechanical keyboard. Uh, it's technically the keycaps have been replaced because, oh boy, were they wearing out. Um, oh, I should plug this in so you can see that there is, in fact, little LEDs. Let me... I don't know if they're going to even show up. Yeah, you can sort of see it when it's racing by as it's booting up. But yeah, um, it has white LEDs. Uh, this is just the default uh, is it function. Oh, function helps if I hit the right button. There we go. I usually keep it like that. It loses its memory. This is an extremely cheap keyboard. Um, I want to say I paid 20 bucks for it on Amazon. 25 something like that. And this was long ago at this point. I bought this keyboard specifically because I got tired of work keyboards that were pieces of garbage. This keyboard still works, believe it or not. But it doesn't feel very good. And um, so I should start explaining some of the differences between mechanical keyboards. This is what's referred to as a blue switch. You can see it's blue. Um, blue switches, named, I should unplug it so I don't randomly type things into the laptop that it's plugged into. It's fine. It's on the lock screen anyway. Um, so a blue switch is clicky. You can hear it make a whole bunch of noise. And some of my Let's Plays, you'll actually even hear this keyboard because this is what I preferred. Uh, this is what's referred to as a clicky switch. The color blue is specifically what the company Cherry, who makes mechanical keyboard switches, color codes their switches. So, this is a blue... Technically, this is Utemu brand. It's a knockoff of Cherry MX. So, it's very similar, but... Really, boo? Please stop. All of my cats want all of my attention right now, and unfortunately, I have to do this up here because my housemate's currently downstairs with his girlfriend. So... <sighs> trying to be the nice housemate. Anyway, so this is, I want to say it's Mechanical Eagle brand or something like that. It's, um, yep, there's some model information. You'll notice most of it's in Chinese, and that's because this is a Chinese keyboard. Um, from there, I moved on to two almost identical keyboards, and this is actually the first thing I wanted to show. So... This, as you can see from the label right here, is a Cherry MX Blue keyboard. Um, this is an actual correct brand MX Blue. I can't remember if it even has any LEDs. Let's find out really fast. Nope, it just has the standard 
keyboard LEDs. And in fact, this is about as basic of a keyboard as you can get. This is in fact a name brand keyboard. It's Gigabyte. Um, it was cheap. This one was, I think, 30 bucks. And it's broken, actually, or partially broken. It's inconsistent in functionality. But there's a reason why I demonstrate. This is also blue switches, but this is the exact same brand of keyboard, but red switches. It's the same keyboard. The sole difference is blue. Oh. Red. And the color difference, well, notice this has a very different sound. So blue switches are clicky. They are also tactile, which is to say that you can depress it slightly and nothing will happen. But once you hear that click, that's when it actuates. And then you can bottom out by going even further. It has an interesting feel to the hand. These, on the other hand, even just me resting my fingers on it would actually be enough to depress the key and to actuate the key is what it's referred to, which means that red switches are typically preferred by gamers because you can have a very light touch in fast switch gameplay. I cannot stand red switches. I bought this specifically because my partner didn't like my blue switches, and I wanted to have a mechanical keyboard that my partner could use. So I ended up buying the red switches, and I can't use it. I mean, I can, obviously, but it's not something that I want to use. Also, that scratch... Yeah, that scratch was there before. This is a very old desk. I, I bought this desk when I first moved to Madison, so this desk is... Almost 14 years old now, so, and it's been abused, you don't worry about it. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to mention this is because these are identical keyboards other than the Switch. This is very common in the mechanical keyboard world of the sole difference between keyboard A and keyboard B is going to be just the Switch that is underneath. They are both Cherry branded, which Cherry is the primary brand for mechanical keyboard switches for uh, the most mainstream brand, I should say. Uh, there are a couple of others, Gateron being the other common one, but you'll notice that all of the keyboards, including my original keyboard here that I'm showing, is a are full keyboards. They have the full selection of keys that you would expect on any key, full-size keyboard. They have the number pad, they have the function rows, they have numbers, letters, the standard familiar design that you would find in a normal keyboard. But this is when I started thinking, you know, there might be situations where I want something else. Enter the next keyboard that I bought, or technically my partner bought for me as a present. And I'm going to leave the red here for comparison purposes. This is a red dragon. You'll immediately notice that there is something very different about this keyboard, and not just the fact that it says Red Dragon there, but it doesn't have a number pad. Um, this keyboard does in fact have LED backlit keys, just plug it in really fast, but you'll notice that they're different colors. This is RGB LEDs. Whoops, sorry about that, Edited me here. I just realized I didn't actually finish my thought. Um, it has RGB LEDs, but I actually don't care about what color the backlit LEDs are. I would actually prefer solid white, but, well, I didn't have it at the time, and I'd rather have something there than nothing. Okay, back to the video. Also, the font on the legend is pretty awful. I will certainly agree. But I wanted a keyboard that was a little more portable. And the reason why I wanted something a little more portable is because I wanted to be able to carry it with me. So I have this case. It barely fits in the case, but I wanted to bring it with me when I'm traveling because I have a portable desktop. One moment. Isin and Boo don't like each other, but at the same time, Boo seems to be very brave half the time and the other half the time is Garrity Cat. I don't understand. Anyway, so I bought this keyboard, or my partner bought this keyboard at my direction as a gift, but specifically so I had something I can travel with that was still felt good. Um, these are still blue switches, although I believe these are Otemu, just like my original keyboard. And this is a perfectly cromulent keyboard, other than the lack of number pad. 
In an ideal world, I would actually prefer something like this and have a separate number pad. That way I can space them apart differently. But this led me on a journey of trying to find keyboards that were maybe a little bit smaller, but still met all of my needs. Because the problem with this keyboard is that I frequently use a number pad. And this obviously doesn't have one. So I couldn't use this as my daily driver. And when the blue version of this keyboard broke, this became my daily driver because my other keyboard was my work keyboard. Now we come into the more modern times. And my next keyboard, well, it's a wee bit different. This is my current work keyboard. You'll notice that it's only slightly larger. See, a little gap, but effectively one key width larger. But this actually has a full number pad. So this is what's referred to as a TKL or 10 keyless keyboard, sometimes known as an is it 84%, 85%. 85%. Um, that's just mean that this is literally 85% of the area of a full-size keyboard. Yep, that's right. It's editor me here again. I was mixing up terminology. It's an 84 key keyboard or 80%. So that's where I was getting my numbers mixed up. Apologies for the mistakes later on. This is sometimes known as a 1800 or 96% keyboard, which is it has 96, I'm oh, sorry, it's not the area, it's nine. It's 85% of the keys. This has 96% of the keys. It is missing a couple of keys. Uh, you will notice, for instance, that there is no print screen key on this keyboard, or scroll lock, or pause, which that actually does drive me a little batty. Um, you also notice that there's no insert key. There is this useless LED key. Um, actually, I can turn on the lights because the other thing is, this is a Bluetooth keyboard. And it should connect momentarily. Let me just wick up the laptop it would connect to. There we go. And it's really hard to see the lights because on this keyboard it's much lighter, or much less bright, there we go, than the other one. But this allowed me to have a full-size keyboard and be relatively small. Um, I had intended to return this keyboard, but didn't because I messed up the return um, timeline and I missed it by a day. So I'm stuck with this. This became my work keyboard. The other main difference is, you'll notice, clicky clicky, no clicky. But at the same time, this is not um, a red switch. This is actually a brown switch. So let me see if I can squeeze back on our three keyboard selection for switches. Eh, close enough. You can see the width of the keyboard, at least, to give you an idea on how much wider this is. So, this is a blue, or what's referred to as a clicky switch. This is a brown, or a tactile switch. And this is a red, or a linear switch. The difference is that the same feel that I have, where I can rest my fingers on here, press down part of the way, it will click, and then I can press even further. I have the same thing here. I can press down slightly, nothing, actuate and then I can bottom out. This doesn't feel... This takes more force than the brown switch. Um, there, And the brown switch still takes more force than the red switch. So it's somewhere in between, basically. And the brown switches are what I've settled upon for I need a keyboard that works with other people around, or I need a keyboard that allows me to stream without having a bunch of clicky noises. So... This particular keyboard is um, Keychron brand, and this keyboard happens to be wireless and wired at the same time. So, let's see, Keychron brand, and uh, it's on this side. See, this switch um, up top is for Bluetooth, down below is for wired, in the middle is just off. This switch is for one side is Windows and Android, the other side is Mac, that way the keys are correct. And then this is a USB-C port. It is actually detachable from the keyboard side, and it will work wired. And that's kind of the ideal situation for me. Also, this chassis is metal, so the keyboard itself weighs a decent amount, so it's not going to slide around on the desk or anything like that. I really like it, except for one problem. That's why I'm scooting these up a bit. This key here. The way that I use a number pad is that I hit 
see if I can, sorry, moving around my little stuffed creatures. So the way I use a number pad is like this, where I'm using my right thumb to hit the zero key. When I move up to over here, my right thumb hits this arrow key instead. So a 1800 or 1800 or 96% keyboard is basically the same set of keys, only all of the open space is squished. So it fits in a smaller footprint. Because they are squished, this area here constantly affects me. I'm constantly hitting keys that aren't there or hitting the wrong keys. So I don't like using this keyboard. I would actually rather not have a 10 key list at all, which is the one that you can barely see up here at this point, and then have a separate keypad. That would be ideal. But unfortunately, I don't have a separate keypad. But what I do have, let me move this out of the way is my final incarnation of keyboard, ultimately known as the keyboard that I bought because I'm traveling next week. And this is much, much smaller. This is what's referred to as a 75% keyboard. 75% um, being 75% of the keys. These two keyboards basically have the same keys outside of the 10 keyless pad, or the 10 keypad, not keyless, whatever. Um, a couple of the keys are a little squished and slightly differently positioned. I actually don't like the positioning of these that much, but it's not the end of the world. I don't expect a keypad over here, so that helps. And it generally has the same keys, although it has these two keys that are mostly useless. Also, you may or may not be able to tell, this is a much thinner keyboard. Just look at this. This keyboard's thickness is less than just the chassis of the upper one. This is definitely a much more portable keyboard. In addition, it has the same USB-C port and two switches, Android slash Windows on one side, Apple on the other, and wired and wireless. So this keyboard is actually what I'm bringing with me. However, there's a trick here. So these are brown switches. So they have the very same little feel, only they're ultra slim, so there's less key travel overall. But these are technically what's referred to as optomechanical. So what makes a mechanical keyboard mechanical is the fact that it has a mechanical switch. It's... Maybe editor me can put in some quick video that shows the difference between the types of switches. But a mechanical switch is literally making a mechanical effect in order to depress the keyboard. What a traditional keyboard does is a rubber dome slash capacitive switch, where literally there's like a little rubber dome that you depress, and it makes contact with a piece of metal, and that contact is what counts as the key pressed down. This is an optical mechanical keyboard. So instead of it being just mechanical, it's actually like a little laser that's going through to see, hey, look, is there movement here? Um, this keyboard actually does come in a purely mechanical form, but strangely enough, one, this is cheaper, two, I actually prefer the feel of this compared to the mechanical one, and three, and this is the trick between these two, the switches are what's referred to as hot swap switches. So on mechanical keyboards, there are two different types of ways that a switch can be bound. Either it is pop this off really fast. Either it is soldered on, where this is not going to move without breaking things or having to resolder, or uh, unfortunately I don't have the key puller handy right now, do I? No, I don't, because I think, think my house cleaners decided to go throw away the box on me yet again. Um, I can pull this one at least. Just my fingers. Or you can actually get a little puller and pull the entire switch up itself. Now, the reason why you might want to do this is twofold. One, people in the mechanical keyboard fandom will replace switches on some and or all of the keys with more special slash much more expensive switches or Frankenstein switches where they're using parts of multiple switches at once or they want to remove the switches so they can lube them up and put them back in or there's a lot of different reasons. But long story short, the reason why I want a hot swap switch is because reason number two, if one of these keys were to happen to break, I can replace the switch. So I only need to replace one switch 
instead of an entire keyboard. Hence, this keyboard, the MX Blue that I have, being mostly useless because one of these switches is shorting out, and I don't know which one, and it's irrelevant because I would have to desolder it. And let's just say that my soldering skills are non-existent because that involves smoke, which requires me to not be pyrophobic. So, when I had men started this, I had mentioned that I am a mechanical keyboard hobbyist and not a member of the mechanical keyboard fandom. Here's a good reason as to why. This keyboard up here costs $35. That is within the range of normal keyboards, non-mechanical, that you can buy. Better get in. These are my tentacle kitties, by the way. Uh, these are from the first responders pack from start of the pandemic that they were doing fundraising for nursing and so on. I bought a couple of them. I just I put them on both sides. Anyway, um, this is thirty-five dollars. These keyboards are much more expensive. This keyboard here, I believe, is eighty or ninety, and this one was ninety-five. This has got to be a record for sheer number of audio corrections that Editor Me has had to do. Hi, it's Editor Me. Once more. So the middle keyboard was, in fact, $90, as I had said, at least the model that I bought. I Technically, it was open box, so I think I paid less than that for it, um, for the features that I have. But the bottom keyboard is actually $84 before shipping with those features. So just as an FYI, I kind of mixed up the pricing. Sorry. These would all be considered budget level of keyboards. Let me repeat. $35, $95, budget. Because they go up much higher than that in the fandom. I have a cat that's intruding again. One moment. See what I mean? Really, cat? I figured you needed a cat break since I've been talking too much about technology. So anyway, um, mechanical keyboards can go for quite a bit more than just $100. Um, when I was shopping for a mechanical keyboard that fit my requirements, which I just wanted something relatively small, but still had a function row. Memory span of a gnat, I swear. Um, I can switch over to me now. It's rather dark in here, apologies. Um, so, when I was looking for a keyboard for myself, what I wanted... I wasn't even necessarily going for something slim like this. What I wanted was an 85% or a 75% keyboard. 75% for reference, still has a function row. And all of the keys. Uh, this is probably mirror imaged for you now. But whatever. It has a function row in all of the keys. Uh, other than the keypad. And it's squished. Because not squished would end up being like... The Red Dragon 85% that I have. And the reason why I wanted that is that I use my function keys very, very often. And losing them would be very bad. I don't want to use a key combination in order to be able to access function keys for most things that just, no, don't want to do that. And mechanical keyboards do come smaller. Um, the next tier down is a 60%, which doesn't have the function row. And then there's even 40% that doesn't even have the number row, where it's just letters and spacebar. I uh, don't understand, but whatever. Different trucks for different folks, but... The point is, when I was looking for keyboards like this, this was the cheap one. The same keyboard that I found that I really liked the features of, but it wouldn't have arrived on time anyway, was still was on the upper end of budget at nearly two hundred dollars. Except that there were no keycaps included, or switches. It was just the base, so I would have needed to have bought all of the switches. So. The 80 some odd switch keys worth of switches, I would have needed to install them myself. I would have needed to buy keycaps. I would have needed to install the keycaps myself. And while that would have been a much better experience, like appearance wise, uh, yeah, the total 
sum total that I had made for what I wanted was about $380. And now we're finally getting into the mid-range of mechanical keyboards. The upper end goes over $1,000. For a keyboard. You see what I mean by fandom versus hobbyist? Like, I like typing on mechanical keyboards. I am the type of person that types very quickly. Hold on, I'm tired of holding this. One moment. There, that's a little better now that I can actually use my hands. Um, so I type pretty quickly. My normal typing speed's about 95 to 115 words a minute. I can theoretically type faster. I have clocked myself over 200 before, but I injure myself when I do that. So I, I can type short bursts and be generally okay. Long term, that's bad for me. So I intentionally slowed down my typing speed down to about 100-ish words a minute. So I do like having nice keyboards. And every keyboard that I showed, outside of hitting the number pad on the, um, this one, the uh, 1800 slash... 96%, there we go, uh, keyboard. Outside of this one and hitting the number pad, I am at 100% accuracy typing on all of them. All the keys are the same size, so I don't really notice. And I was fine with a 75%. This, for reference, is exactly what you will find on a laptop. Obviously, these keys might be actually slightly more spread out than a laptop, but same size keys as a normal keyboard, it's generally fine. And I doubt I would ever be able to tell the difference between that and the $300 model or the $1,000 model or anything like that. I'm kind of afraid to find out, to be honest, because uh, what if I can tell the difference? Anyway, I thought it would be interesting to show a little bit into the insights of the mechanical keyboard hobby and how I relate to it. I'm definitely a on the cheaper end of the hobby, even though, again, $95 keyboard. This is cheaper. This is actually not even the most expensive keyboard I've ever owned. Um, that would have been probably about 10 or maybe even a little bit more than 10 years ago. I had a Logitech full-size keyboard with nice little display in front, and it was a Bluetooth keyboard that included a Bluetooth mouse with it, and that retailed for something like $150. I had like seven or eight of them because they kept failing on me. Really, Boo? Really? She keeps doing this. I don't know why. There are humans downstairs. I'm not the only person here. <sighs> anyway. Do you want to be held up as him? No? Okay. I mean, if I held Boo, she would probably start hissing because she's too close to hissing at that point. Anyway. um. So, yeah. I wasn't able to go out and about. If you can't tell, it's actually night at this point, even though it was morning when I first recorded. Just been a long day of doing things. Um, yeah. Let me know if anybody wants me to go into detail like this on various computer-related things, because I have opinions on a lot of things. Lots of opinions. Oh, forgot to mention, the brown switch stuff, like this one or... This one. Both of these keyboards are Keychron keyboards. That's Keychron. This is also Keychron. This is a K3. That one's a K8, I want to say. K4. Um, I like them, but I've been told that they have some reliability issues. Or not reliability, um, consistency issues. Where you'll get a dud keyboard every so often when you first buy them. I haven't had any problems. I also bought a whole bunch of keyboards all at once to try things out so I can return the rest. So, yeah, I need to do that tomorrow as well. It's been over a half an hour, I think. I don't know. This section's been 27 minutes and 40 seconds so far. Don't know what the f length of the first section was. So, I'll talk to you later in a minute.